Hello there, welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can set up your YubiKey so that uh, to be able to remote log in to your remote servers you will just enter a pin code and uh, Bob's your uncle. So the advantage of using a pin code rather than uh, tapping the YubiKey to generate a one-time password that logs you in is you do not need to do anything on each of your servers, each of your remote servers. If you want to be able to log in using the one-time password, which you generate by pressing the button on the the the, the YubiKey, then you will have to you have to perform some extra steps on each server to be able to do that. So we're gonna not go through that effort, and you just have to remember a pin code. All right, cool. So um, all you gotta do is you have to install this software. So on your local laptop or computer, so the one that is using the YubiKey. I've already done it, so I'm just going through the motions. D -d -d -d. Oh, sorry, out. Uh, paste. Ah, all right. Paste. So I'll do that. And then I'm going to do that. Alright, cool. So, YubiQ is installed. Alright, you don't do this. This is for if you want to use one time passwords on your servers. Uh, I'm going to verify my PIN. Alright, cool. The default PIN is 123456. Uh, I've just switched that around to be. Alright, cool. So, that's the val valid PIN. Um, if you wanted to change your PIN, here's how we would do it. So, I'm going to do. Old pen equals six five four three two one. New pen equals one two three four five six. Right, and then I'll do this command. Okay, so now I can do verify. Uh, I probably went past it. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not too worried about you guys knowing what my pin is because you'd have to steal my YubiKey. Um, my physical YubiKey. So there we go. Um, my pin is now one, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. Um, so I'm going to generate a public ROC certificate. Bear in mind, I just tried to do this tutorial again and I didn't realize that each time you generate this ROC public certificate, you're going to like reset up. So you'd have to re-add your public SSH key to all your remote servers. So only do this once. Don't don't keep doing this. Alright, so doing that. So my YubiKey is madly flushing away and it's generated the um generated a new private key. Oh Intel it generated a new private key. That's a public key. Like if I cat the pop oh cat can't type today. You'll see it's just a public key that we got out, right? So we're now generating the self-signed certificate here. You would have to change your pin to whatever it is accordingly. I've changed it back to the default, so I don't need to change this at all, which is nice. All right, cool. So the, uh, let me just get, clear up some of my old files. So my new file, the output file is private.pem, cat, private. Actually, I'm not going to cut that file because, yeah, the internet, I might use that. Actually, no, well, because um, I'll just reset it again. So, here's a private key. Alright. Uh, cat. Pub. There's the public key. Alright, cool. Alright, so now you would insert, import the RSA certificate. Paste. And now I'm going to extract the SSH key, the public key that I will have to add to my remote servers. So now that is my public key that I would add to the remote servers. Now I've set that up to be my SSH public key dot pub um, to make the life easy for me. I'm going to override my my local laptop's default public key to be that. So I'm going to move it sudo move. Actually, I don't even have to use sudo. I need to stop doing that. Move my .sh id rsa .pub. Right. If I go to sh, there's no 
private key file is just the public one. We will use the um, YubiKey for the private key, right? Uh, so at this point, we need we need to yep. I'm gonna copy the because I've set it as my default. I can just use this. Otherwise, you'd have to manually edit the uh, authorized keys files on the remote server. So real quick, I'm just gonna paste this sage copy. We have to use dash f because we don't have a private key. At three. I'm not going to worry about that. So I've added the key. Uh, I now need to configure my computer client to use that. So I'm going to do run this command. I'm going to configure my local SSH service to look at the YubiKey for the private key. Um, so you can see it's just pointing to there. All right. All right. All right. Cool. And. Don't need to do this. This is for the server one-time password thing. Uh, that's again, all of this is for the server one-time password thing. Um, yeah, so now I should be able to SSH into the remote server. It's port 2385, you probably won't have to do that part. Um, 10.1.0.3. And then you enter your pin code. And Bob's your uncle, you are now in. Hopefully that was fairly straightforward. Um, if you have any issues, I would recommend just double like double check you actually copied the uh, SSH key to the remote server. Um, I'm gonna I can show you that now. So, uh, clear. And I don't need sudo cat dot sh um, authorized keys right. So I've been adding all these keys to the to the server. Um, you would have to manually copy paste it into there if you wanted to not move, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, I'm going to do it again. SH10. I'm going to enter a different or incorrect key this time. Uh, so I'm going to do my old key and then that would fail. Alright, cool, cool. Hopefully that was useful, and I'll catch you next time.